Hi friends, it's Maggie, also known as Paisley and Glue, and I am so excited to announce that my book is finally coming out this week. Um, I wrote a book this last year and a half with uh, CNT Publishing, and they are starting a new imprint that is focused on cosplayers called Fan Powered Press, and uh, my book is part of their launch of that imprint which is super exciting along with lots of super fun people like Jedi Manda and Casey Renee and Beverly Downen and Spicy Thai cosplay and so many other super fun people. Some of those are coming out soon, some of those have already come out, um, but this is mine and I got a box this week and it was super exciting to see it all in print. There's been a couple books and some um, video tutorials out there about smocking, but there's been none from the lens of costume making. Uh, so that was kind of what I was really interested in is um, talking about smocking in that frame of reference. So not just let's make a pillow, though you certainly can and they look super cool. Um, but how do we smock the fabric and then how do we incorporate it into the garment? And how do we finish it off? Because that's often the part of the process that's missing from other books um, and videos about fabric manipulation. And so today I am going to be showing you just a little bit about what you can find in here, as well as demoing one of the more popular stitches uh, in smocking, which is arrow smocking, which we see a lot in various pop culture references. Um, there's also something of a companion product that is uh, being released along with the fuller length book, which is called Smocking Stencils. And that is a 16-page booklet, which has four different um, stitches, sort of a compressed version of what's in the longer book, but some of the more popular ones. So there's lattice, braid, shells, and arrow. But the really handy thing with the smacking stencils is that it comes with these um, these stencils in a grid. So if you've ever smocked before, you know that the first step you need to do is to mark out a dot grid on your fabric, which can be tedious and can easily sort of veer off into the unknown, which is kind of what always happens to me when I try to um, just use like a quilting ruler. It takes a lot of precision and it takes a long time to mark those out. So these will help you get started a little bit faster with your actual fun part, which is the smocking portion. There are three sizes and they are uh, three quarters of an inch, one inch and one and one quarter. But what you can do with these various sizes is you can start to skip dots to get a larger grid. So for the three quarter inch, you could skip every other dot and then it would end up being an inch and a half because that's how math works. So super handy. They are, you know, eight and a half by 11 stencil. So that's going to be a lot bigger than a quilting ruler is going to allow you to mark easily and um, get you marking and smocking a little faster. Um, also, I had some birds, just here. I had some birds build a nest under my air conditioning unit in my window in my studio this summer and uh, they have hatched. It is very cute, but they are very noisy. So if you hear some little cheeps in the background, that is uh, what that is. And we are just existing with them. It's great. <laughs> so I just wanted to show you a little bit of the fun stuff in here. First of all, let's talk about this layout because I am in love. I had the really just honor to have so many pals be a part of this with me. I'm just like, everyone looks so amazing. So many good photos. I can't even of people who have already used smocking in their costumes to just, just wow us and just like blow us away and hopefully give everybody some um, ideas about how you can use smocking in your own costumes. And then there are just so many different patterns. Um, you're going to get 14 North American smocking patterns and then some introductory patterns for English smocking, which is kind of what we think about when we think about like 
traditional smocking with like heirloom um, children's clothing and other sorts of like pre-Raphaelite you know dresses like like this gorgeous example um but we're you know we're sort of gathering in the fabric we're pleating it and then we're applying decorative embroidery stitches to the top of it that's English smocking and North American smocking is done in a little bit of a different way where we are actually stitching from the back so as you can see in this picture this is the back view so the stitches are visible on the back but on the front we get this raised three-dimensional pattern popping up on the front of the fabric, but it sort of is like magically appeared as we're stitching our pattern onto the back, which is kind of what I enjoy about the process of it is that you see it forming as you stitch and it's sort of just like pops it up and it's super exciting and fun to um, see take form. So today we are going to be, um, doing a sample of arrow smocking also called dragon scale which is a very popular example north american smocking which we see in a lot of cosplays and a lot of pop culture references namely game of thrones saw it quite a bit in daenerys's costumes and um, there's been a couple other examples since then so you can see in the book, I've got an example of what the front's going to look like, what the back is going to look like, so you can make sure it kind of looks the same as you're going, as well as your pattern template here. So to start out, you need to choose what kind of fabric you're going to use. And this is really up to you and what you want the final, um, final piece to look like. I do recommend using something that's a little um, lighter weight. As you can see here, I did this example of braid smocking on a vinyl, which actually looks super cool. It's not super easy to do, and I wouldn't wanna do it on something much heavier than this. This is not like a super heavyweight thing. This is like, I think this is from Yaya Han's collection of vinyls. So it's not like an upholstery weight situation, but it is, you know, not super lightweight. This is an example of a metallic jacquard that I use. This fabric is from my Maleficent cosplay. Same pattern as the vinyl. You can see this has been steam set. So it hasn't been hard pressed, but it's just been steamed sort of over here to set the, the pattern into the fabric a little bit. You can see how much flatter this is. And this is the same pattern the braid pattern in a lightweight polyester like silky situation so you can see how much sort of flimsy that is and how soft that is compared to the jacquard so that is something to consider when you are smocking what kind of fabric are you using what do you want it to do at the end how stiff of a hand do you want it to be? It's possible to starch something. This has been starched. It's one of my samples of the shell smocking from the book. So it's been starched. It's been steam set. It's also sat in a box for a while, so it's a little bit crushed. But you can see this is a quilting cotton originally, and so it's got, you know, it's kind of beefy now that, that the smocking is set into it. This is a really soft um, faux leather in the lattice pattern and actually really love the way this is and it's still pretty soft because this was like really nice buttery um, pleather to begin with but this would be like so cool for an armor piece still flexible still can be worn with ease but it just has so much dimension i really love it and then this is an example of a little bit heavier weight um twill fabric cotton twill fabric that i've set the uh, arrow smocking into we are going to be using just a regular quilting cotton so it's going to be a little softer than this but it's going to look pretty similar to this when we're done so our first step is we are going to need to mark out our grid and so for this we're going to use our handy dandy smocking stencils and for this demo i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a little bit bigger of a pattern so that we can see it easier. So let's do the inch and a quarter. I'm just gonna lay this out. We're gonna leave a little bit of seam allowance on all the sides. 
You do want to follow grain with this, at least when you're starting. I'm also using a heat soluble pe uh, pen here so that it will disappear after I steam set it. That's something to think about when you're marking. I will, I will use pencil on lighter fabrics that aren't transparent because you won't see it on the back, but uh, be really careful about using pens or Sharpies that um, have a lot of ink to them. Sharpie will eventually show through, maybe not like right away, but you can see that's what happened with this um, really cool faux leather is that I use like a pink permanent marker on the back and uh, about five months later it sort of seeped through the pleather and now you can see the pink lines on the front from my pattern. So something to keep in mind. Um, I did use silver sharpie on this metallic jacquard on my Maleficent cosplay and that did work pretty well. Something about the silver doesn't show through as much, though I would use like a light hand. Okay, so got my first line. I'm gonna move my stencil over, match up my dots with this first line of holes. Probably using white on white was not like a great choice here for this sample, but. This using the stencils is still much faster than trying to mark this all with a ruler. Uh, you can also like score lines with a ruler in a grid, but that is just gonna leave you with more marks on the back of your fabric. And it gets a little confusing as you'll see when we start to draw our pattern to try to find like what are the lines you're looking for. So that's just something to keep in mind. So now looking at our book, we've got our little template down here. And so now we're going to draw these red lines onto our fabric so that we know where we're stitching. For Eris Mocking, it's a series of V's. And the reason that you want to draw your pattern on as opposed to just referring to the pattern template is that once we start cinching all of these up, it's going to become very difficult to see like where you are on your grid and like what dots are next. So drawing on your lines is pretty critical. Oh, those birds are so loud. The other thing to think about when you are prepping your fabric is how much fabric you will need. You're gonna lose about half of your yardage. Um, in the book, I do make notes of what my fabric started out as and what it ended up as so that you can kind of do the math comparison and see like how much you lose. So this in the book, I started out with an 18 by 18 square and I was using a one and a half inch grid. So that's something to keep in mind. And I ended up being uh, about 12 inches by seven inches. So in arrows mocking, you lose more um, horizontally than you do vertically. So that's something to keep in mind because nothing's worse than doing a big piece of yardage and then not ending up with a big enough piece of fabric that has been smocked at the end for your project. All right, next step. We've got our fabric prepped. Now to get our needle ready. What do I have in here? All weird size needles. In smocking, generally, 
needle size doesn't really matter. L slightly longer, I think is easier to work with. I have some like mobility grip issues. Um, I'm gonna use a kind of bigger one than I maybe normally would just so you can see easily what I'm doing. You wanna cut a length of thread, oh, about a yard in length. We're gonna double it up so it'll be shorter than that ultimately. Thread your needle. Pull your thread so that it is even at the edges. So we've got two lengths of thread that are equal and you're gonna tie a knot in the end. And I have a video on how to tie this fast big knot. First step, we're gonna start with arrow smocking at the base of this V. We're gonna take what I call a bite of fabric, which is like four to five threads in the weave. And go ahead and take two stitches right on top of each other. Now the lines that you've drawn show your needle the direction it needs to go. So we've taken a stitch at the base of our V. Now we're going to jump up to the top of this line. So to this dot, this is the direction our needle wants to go. I'm going to take another bite of fabric at the top of that V and gently pull that point to meet the base of, base of the V. And you're sort of manually arranging the fabric as you go. So now you can see I've got two small folds. Those two points have been drawn together. And now we're gonna take another stitch and then another stitch through both folds. Now we're going to go to the top of that side of the V same thing, bite of fabric, and then pull that fold down to meet your other two. And then this is where you really need to kind of manipulate the fabric. So all three folds now are sort of making a little, like a little star shape. You're going to take another stitch or three on top of your folds to keep all three points together. And you really can't do too much of that. The main thing is to remember to just be taking your little bites of fabric right in the, in the, in the top of those folds, as opposed to, you know, you don't want to go down to like there or anything, because then you're going to start to see it on the front side. Okay, first point done. We're gonna make a knot to hold that together, but don't clip your thread. And that's partly to hold the pattern together and partly um, just to conserve thread because otherwise you'd be clipping and then you have to make another knot and it's like a whole thing and it saves time and it saves thread. We're gonna jump straight down to the next bottom of our V, do the same thing, take a little bite of fabric. We're not pulling this tight. We're gonna let that just be flat. Take another stitch right on top of the one you just did to kind of lock that off. And then we're gonna continue with our stitches in the manner we just did. Take another stitch here. Arrange our folds.
Now with this one, you can see that there's a little bit of excess thread here. So as you stitch, it's fine to leave it like this, but as you stitch and you kind of get a feel for it, you can sort of feel how much pickup you need to do to kind of make that. So basically it's like the length from here to here is actually how much tautness you will need in your thread. So again, you can leave it with some excess there, but if you want it to kind of lay flat like this one does, so that you don't have like a bunch of like threads floating in the back, um, you'll kind of get a feel for that as you go. And that's literally it. So we're gonna go to the bottom of this row, column, I suppose, is really what I should call it. And then we're gonna knot our, fab, our thread off. And then we're gonna tie another knot in the end of the thread. Depending on how far you go, you might need to get some more thread, which you can do at any time, just knot off. Cut the thread, re-thread your needle, but then we would just jump up to this row, which is start slightly below this point. So you do the same thing on those and then jump up to here and then continue your way down until you get to the end of your yardage. And while you're doing this, I'm using um, green thread just so you can see the contrast, but you would want to use matching thread to your project to minimize the chance that the stitches will be seen from the front. Normally, it's not a huge issue because this, the stitches sort of end up underneath a pattern you can see our pattern here starting to sort of take shape. So once this is steamed, you'll see that will flatten, that will flatten, that will flatten. And then that's the first row of our, of our dragon scale. So you can see where the stitches end up being right in the point of that scale. If it was white thread, you would never see that. It's green, so you do see it a little bit. So keep that in mind. The other thing to think about is we talked about what we mark the back side of this with. This is heat uh, erasable pen. So, you, but keep in mind, if it wasn't, you do see those little dots because this is a sheer quilting fabric. So you can see through it. So keep that in mind when you are marking the back of your project. Okay, so there's my first row done. I'm gonna continue stitching to the end, speed things up a little bit, and then we'll see what it looks like from the front. I turned my air conditioner on because it is real hot in here. Um, so hopefully the sound doesn't get too bad, but um, a couple of things I wanted to say here. Smacking is a nice, Thing to do like it's pretty portable depending on how much you have to do of it I have done this on planes which was like kind of weird but like people were asking me a lot of questions about it but um, the nice thing is like depending on how much yardage you have to do like you know it's just the fabric and a pair of snips and a needle and thread so like that's like literally all you need so that is one nice thing about it. Um, it also like you can kind of zone out while you're doing it. Like once you get the hang of the particular pattern you're doing, which is also nice. So like it's a good thing to do like while watching a movie or like even like talking to somebody, like hang out with friends. Similar to like knitting or something, like you can kind of do it while other things are happening around you.
And again, like when you are starting your project, I do always highly recommend doing a little sample of the particular stitch with the fabric and at the size you think you're going to do just to make sure that you like the scale because sometimes you'll be like yeah this is going to be great and then you don't really think about how like an inch grid is going to look like once like once you stitch it all up um because it, it, it ends up being a lot smaller than you think it will often like this is an inch and a quarter um but yeah so like this is like a medium dragon scale at an inch and a quarter, and that's the largest um, grid that we have in the smocking stencils. So you can imagine if it was an inch grid or even a three quarters of an inch grid, it would um, be like exponentially smaller, your, your arrows. So keep that in mind. And again, like do some samples, then you can figure out if you like the scale, how much fabric you're gonna lose to make sure that you only have to do this once to get the result that you want. So I apologize for the air conditioning noise. It is 95 degrees outside though, so here we are. Um, so here's the back side. I've done a section. Um, you can, so you can see how much that sort of pulls down the fabric, how much yard did you lose. And then from the front, she's looking cute. You may need to somewhat um, like manually arrange your arrows. And then my last step for this would be to take this to my iron this is highly dependent on what you want it to look like. If you want it to sort of be organic looking like this, um, you can leave it. I like to do a little bit of a steam set just to set the design into the fabric a little bit. So I'm gonna hold the iron over the fabric but not necessarily touch the fabric. Use lots of steam and then that's gonna set the pattern into the fabric without hard pressing it, it'll look more like this. Um, you can also hard press the pattern if that is the look you're going for. And you can see a little bit more of what that's gonna look like. It doesn't look like um, Lady Kit's cosplay pressed hers like hard, hard, but she definitely you, you know touched the iron to the fabric, I would think, because it's a little bit more flattened out, the design than what this is. And that gives you um, a little bit of a different look. So there we go. Arrow smocking, dragon scale smocking. It's been seen in a lot of different looks. I would definitely say this is the most popular North American smocking pattern that I've seen sort of in the cosplay world. So it should hopefully come in handy to lots of folks. I will have links below to where you can purchase both the book and the stencils if you would like. They should also be available both on the CNT website and also in your local Joanne store, Michael's stores maybe, uh, any of your craft or fabric stores. They should be available and if you would like to go to your local bookstore and request that they get a copy in if um, you'd rather do that than purchasing from a website then they would be happy to do that they should be um, widely available i would love to see what you're working on i would love to know what you think you could use smocking for in your own projects and uh, i'll see you guys next time